Welcome to the Single Engine High Wing Electrical System Video Series, Volume 2. The content of this presentation is for reference only and does not contain instructions for continued airworthiness. The approved procedures in their entirety are set out in approved technical publications. Normal operation covers system function from the pilot's viewpoint. We'll be using the 172 POH checklist to give an example of a normal engine start using battery. Uh, the following represents a normal engine start uh, from the battery power, but we're gonna skip some of the points that really don't apply to the electrical system as we go through this. As we look at the electrical system here, we're looking at the standby battery system that we're going to test first, and we see that the standby battery switch is currently in the open position. As we move down the checklist, we're going to test the standby battery, so we will press and hold the standby battery switch in the test position for 10 seconds while we watch the test light on the instrument panel and make sure that it stays illuminated for the entire time. What we will see is current is going to flow from the standby battery through the standby battery switch and through the standby battery printed circuit board. That current will then flow back out of the PCB to the standby battery switch on the other side where it's going to direct the current through a test circuit where there's an overheat switch and then also a load resistor before the circuit returns back to the battery. The PCB is going to monitor the voltage across the load resistor and as long as the voltage stays above about 24.06 volts, the LED will stay illuminated. If it continues to stay illuminated for the 10 second test, we will take that as a pass and move on through the rest of the checklist. If we take that panel forward and take a look at the standby battery switch that's over here and we see the printed circuit board is inside this aluminum enclosure. The overheat switch is on the outside of the aluminum enclosure as well as the load resistor for testing the standby battery system. We will then move the standby battery switch to the arm position. This will direct current through the standby battery switch through the PCB and back out but this time it goes through the other side of the switch towards the essential bus. This will power up some of the basic Garmin essentials, including the primary flight display and the Garmin engine airframe interface so we can get some of the system indications uh, displayed for us for verifying the rest of the system uh, through the engine start. We will look at the engine indication strip and verify that we have at least 24 volts on the essential bus. We will also verify that we have less than a volt and a half on the main bus. This is a system diode check. If one of those diodes that feeds voltage from the main buses to the essential bus has failed, we'll get a back feed towards the main bus. A small amount of leakage is acceptable but if we get more than a volt and a half coming back to the main bus, we need to ground the airplane and correct this issue with the electrical system. We'll then look at our battery amps on the standby side, and we will see an amber indication. Anytime we have a discharge greater than a half an amp, the Garmin is going to display that to us. In an amber condition is a negative discharge, and that's going to be normal because we are powering these items from the standby battery. We'll also verify that we have a standby battery enunciator. That is going to be uh, normal that the standby battery cast message is displayed at this point in the system check. As we continue through the checklist, we'll verify that the propeller area is clear. We always want to do this before turning on the uh, main power to the aircraft because if the sta start contactor is stuck closed we could have a spinning propeller which could uh, injure somebody or something and we don't want that to happen so always make sure the propeller area is clear before turning on the main power. So after clearing the propeller area we will turn on the master switch both the alternator and the battery side of that switch at the same time. Since it tells us alt first we'll look at the alternator side that's going to complete a circuit from the battery terminal of the alternator through the alternator control unit through the alternator contactor and then over to the main bus distribution section of the MCU. The battery side of that switch when we close that is going to close the battery contactor allowing current to flow from the battery through the battery contactor and up through the current sensor 
tying in with the other bus bar that gives us a connection to the main battery buses. As we prepare to start the engine, we'll reach over and grab the magneto switch and we will move that to the start position. When we do that, that will close the start contactor, allowing that battery current to flow down through the start contactor and to the starter itself. As the engine starts, we will then release the magneto switch so that the engine is in normal operating condition. Now, some of these MCUs do have a circuit that can provide a starter energized uh, cast message or um, enunciator light in the cockpit, but we're not currently using that circuit in any of these aircraft, so there's no real indication if the start contactor were to be stuck in the closed position other than perhaps uh, an abnormal sound coming from the engine or the pilot noticing that there is an abnormal, abnormally high current draw through the current sensor itself as current flows down through to the starter. But we're going to assume that we have a good start when we release the switch. The start contactor opens like it should and we'll move on with our checklist. We're going to observe our amperage draw through the current sensors on both the standby battery system and the main electrical bus. Both of those should show in a positive state as a positive charge as the engine is now running and the alternator is providing enough current to power aircraft systems as well as charge those batteries. Now if the engine is spinning slowly and we have a high electrical draw, we may have a low volts cast message at this point if we're below 1000 RPM. And that's going to be considered normal, below 1000 RPM. But if we accelerate the engine up above 1000 RPM, cast message should be extinguished and we should be regulating at about 28, 28 and a half volts at this point. We're also going to verify that we have no low volts enunciator or cast message, depending on how our aircraft is equipped, because at this point we should be above that threshold. At this point we can turn our avionics switch bus 1 and bus 2 on and continue with our normal uh, pre-flight uh, activities as the aircraft is getting ready to depart. Now, after about 30 minutes of flying the aircraft, the main battery should only be drawing 5 amps or less. So that's something that the flight crew should monitor uh, as they depart and in their cruise flight. Um, normal would be 5 amps or less of charging after the battery has recovered from the normal starting and pre-flight sequence that we would uh, have on the aircraft. Also, again, hard, high charge rate may be indicative of a stuck starter. Now, as we look at uh, ground start uh, with external power, the process is very similar. So we're going to skip the things that we've already covered that are the same. Before connecting the external power, we want to make sure that the master switch, alt and bat are off and our propeller area is clear. Again, for caution of a possibly stuck uh, start contactor at this point. So with the alt and bat switch off, we will plug in our ground power. As we plug in the ground power to, into the receptacle, the first thing that is going to make a circuit is the small pin will provide voltage to this, the external power contactor. That will automatically close the contactor without any switchology input from anybody uh, inside or outside the aircraft. And so closing that contactor will then allow that ground power to flow through that external power contactor and directly to the battery. So when that small pin makes contact, external power contactor automatically closing. As this is approximately 28 volts from our ground cart, it's going to be charging the main ship's battery with no protections or regulations beyond the limits of the ground cart itself. Do not leave the aircraft unattended with ground power plugged in. At this point, the current is not going to flow anywhere else into the aircraft until we reach over and close that master alt and bat switch. So as, again, as we saw before, we'll make the connection to the battery circuit of the alternator through to the main bus and also the battery contactor will close, allowing that current to flow up through the current sensor and onto the main ship's buses. Now the location of the ammeter shunt does not give us a total system load per se. It's only showing us which direction is flowing from the top side of the MCU to the bottom side and how much. So 
it throws a lot of people sometimes when they plug ground power in, they've got 28 volts, but it looks like we're discharging the battery. That's not actually true. It's just showing that we've got current flowing from this side of the MCU to that side. So it looks like a discharge just because of the way it's flowing through, but as long as you've got 28 volts there, you are actually charging the battery. We will verify that we have 28 volts shown on our display, just as we did before, and continue through our start sequence, rolling the magneto switch to start. Again, that will close the start contactor, allow that current to go to our starter. We'll start the engine during normal start. We release and open that start contactor. At this point, we can disconnect the ground power from the aircraft and close that little external door on the side. And now we're going to do something a little bit different that we didn't do before in the normal battery start. We're going to increase the power to approximately 1500 RPM for several minutes to charge the battery. This is especially important if the whole reason that we were doing a ground start was because we thought the battery was cold or weak and needed a little help there. Uh, we need to make sure that the battery is charged up before moving on with our pre-flight sequence. We're going to verify that the amps going to both the main battery and the standby battery are within a normal range and that we're charging. We want to make sure that the electrical system is stabilized, the charge rate has stabilized before moving on with the rest of the sequence. We'll verify that the low volts enunciator is out or the cast message is not displayed at above 500, 1500 RPM that should not be displayed. Now we're going to do a capacity check of the battery to make sure that it is in a state that is sufficient for a safe flight. As we roll through the checklist, some of them do have a typo here as we do this internal power check. Some of them will just tell you to turn the alternator off. Some of the checklists tell you to turn the alternator and battery off. You won't be able to complete this test if you turn both alt and bat off. So just turn the alternator off and we're going to run the system on the battery to verify that it has the capacity to keep the system running. As we do this, we'll take the alternator off the circuit and we're going to use our taxi and or landing lights, depending on how our aircraft is configured, to do a load test of the battery. If we can keep all of our instrumentation displayed, our Garmin uh, system lit up and sustain our taxi and or landing lights, depending on how our aircraft is configured, we will pass that test, we will reduce the throttle to idle, and then we will turn the alternator back on. Because we were loading up the battery, we will allow it to recover again for a little bit. So we're going to bring the alternator back into the system. We're going to throttle back up to 1500 RPM and allow the current flow going back into that battery to stabilize before continuing on with our uh, pre-flight checklist. We will verify that our main bus ammeter is uh, charging at a stabilized rate and we will verify that we do not have a low volts enunciator displayed or cast message displayed. If we do have a cast message displayed or the battery ammeter does not show a positive charge after completing this test, do not continue with the flight. We need to service the battery or replace the battery, uh, correct the system before continued flight uh, if it does not pass this test. Otherwise, we will move on, turn our avionics switch bus 1 and bus 2 on, and con continue with our pre-flight activities. This concludes the normal electrical system operations video. Our next video in the series will discuss abnormal system indications and operations. Thanks for watching.